Successful Escapes, number eight. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, providing you with numerous testimonies from people themselves or narrated by me that detail their successful escapes from narcissists utilizing my material. We turn to another recollection where the individual, who wishes to go by the name Anonymous, has asked me to narrate it for them. I would like to thank you so much for the cold half-truth you have shared with us. Last year, I found myself in a relationship with the most amazing, kindest, attentive and loving man. I remember thanking God for bringing this man into my life. I discovered we had similar interests with each day we spent together. It was wonderful. It was pure bliss. I was feeling blessed. We planned trips together. We went out to different restaurants almost every other night and we increasingly grew closer. I had never been so spoiled before. I was so happy, grateful, and elated. I was glowing. I felt like I had met my perfect person. He told me that he'd never felt this way about someone before, that it was different with me, that he loved me, that he wanted to marry me. I couldn't believe my luck. He told me he had two children, and that his breakup with the mother of his children, his ex fiance had ended badly. He told me how much he loved his children, and how his fiance had cheated on him and moved to another city with his children without his knowledge or consent. He asked me to help to get his children back. I'm in the legal profession, and at first I was uncomfortable with assisting him because I felt that I was conflicted and asked a friend to assist him. He was not happy with this arrangement, and so I ended up sending him a template of the document he needed to help in his legal battle against his ex fiance I told him that was all I could do and that he would need to consult with someone else. It was only within a month of us dating that he requested my help and I was uncomfortable with it. I found out through our conversations that he had dated another lady one month prior to us getting into a relationship. When we started our relationship, he told me how much he loved his children and would call them every day when I was with him. However, as the relationship progressed, I noticed that he stopped calling them as frequently and eventually stopped. I also noticed around the three-month mark of our relationship how he seemed to have checked out overnight as though a light switch had been turned off. He began being less available, as he was suddenly always busy with work. When I was with him, he was consistently on his phone. He would even wake up in the middle of the night and take his phone with him to the bathroom and spend a significant amount of time in there and his overall energy towards me was indifferent, neither cold nor warm. You described this HG in a video, The Stranger Zone, which was most helpful. I asked him if everything was okay, and he confirmed that we were fine. After a week of the not-so-silent treatment, I sent him a message suggesting we break up. He responded and said that he didn't want that. I was happy to hear that and thought that perhaps he was going through something and the amazing guy I had initially met would come back. Despite my reservations, we continued dating for another month and a bit. Our final night together, we had gone out to a music festival with my friends, and I felt the same stranger zone situation. I made excuses in my mind, thinking maybe it was work-related stress or his family issues. The next morning, when we woke up, he told me he had plans with friends and we would meet up later. He got out of bed and I heard him talking to his cousin, who he lived with at the time. I'm assuming because his bedroom door was closed and he was speaking his home language, which I am not fluent in, he and his cousin started speaking about other women and how much women loved him. I heard his cousin ask him if he was not afraid of getting caught and he laughed it off and said that women love him. I gathered that I was being cheated on. I got out of bed and asked to use his phone. He reluctantly handed it over to me after ten minutes of asking why I needed it and following me around, and I guess I found what I was looking for. He was cheating on me with several women. From around the time when his energy shifted towards me, I saw that his plans with friends were actually plans with his other girlfriend. I ended the relationship. But I went back about a week later. I missed him. I could not sleep and I could not stop thinking about him. He sent me a message apologising, but there wasn't much effort in his actions after that. I thought he would change and we could fix things. It got better for about a week, not as good as it was earlier on in the relationship, but better than the stranger zone. But after that week, it only got worse, 
and we broke up two weeks later. He dumped me after a really difficult personal situation that I thought we would go through together. He simply didn't care. The breakup felt sudden, especially after he had promised to change and do everything he could to make things work. The relationship was only five months long, but it was quite traumatic. I had never dated anyone so duplicitous. He had said some very unkind things to me and used some personal things I had told him in confidence against me during the disengagement. His words stuck with me for a while. I felt like I was spiralling. I felt really low, the lowest I felt like I'd ever felt. I couldn't stop crying and thinking whether it was my fault and if I'd done something wrong. More than anything else, I felt confused. I kept blaming myself and ruminating about conversations that we had had, arguments, things I had said to him which probably upset him. It went on like this for about three weeks. During this period, he contacted me and asked about a three-day trip we had planned and whether we could still go together. We did, and it was terrible. He went on as though nothing had happened, referred to me endearingly, and acted as though we were in a relationship. I was confused, and then my confusion turned into anger. I felt like I was in a fog, and I couldn't get out. I told a close friend what had happened, and she sent me one of your videos, HG. She kept mentioning that my ex was a narcissist, and I thought that meant that he was vain, and it didn't make any sense. I didn't watch the video she sent immediately, but when I did, I became obsessed with your work. Everything I had gone through just made sense. So many things clicked in my brain. The videos are all I listened to. You are clear, honest and factual. Initially, the videos were also hurtful, and it took me about a week to understand the terminology. I felt so stupid for going back and questioned my intelligence. I went through so many emotions. I thought I was the narcissist. I saw narcissists everywhere. I felt low and broken. But I kept listening to your videos. It made no sense. I'm a grown woman. How could a five-month relationship have impacted upon me so much? I must admit that at some point I felt like that if I continued to listen to your videos, I wouldn't heal and get over what had happened. So I stopped listening and started therapy. But I didn't stop listening for long. It took me a while to get over the relationship. I told myself I wouldn't get into another relationship for a year and I would focus on healing. Your video, The Wrong Focus, during this phase, helped me immensely. I listened to it many times. Fast forward to May 2023. Almost a year later, I got a call from a lady who couldn't stop sobbing. When she finally gathered herself, she told me she was his ex fiance I was shocked. She told me how she got my number and that they had gotten back together about three months after he had disengaged from me. I was shocked yet again because I thought he had been dating the ladies he had been seeing behind my back. He had convinced her that he wanted his family back together and despite her reluctance she got back together with him and he continued to mistreat her and disengaged from her about seven months later after lying, abusing and cheating on her. We spoke for about an hour. She wanted to know what had happened in our relationship after she told me about her relationship. Through your videos, I worked out I was dealing with a middle-mid-range narcissist type A. He was darling in public, helpful and kind, and somewhat good at his job. He told me about his childhood and how he experienced a certain level of abuse. He wasn't raised by either parent but an aunt who said he was somewhat abusive or was a very strict disciplinarian towards him. He was fairly successful, had a good job and was somewhat intelligent and charming. My experience with that narcissist has made me terrified of people, particularly men, and wanting to be in a relationship with men. I know it's narcissism that narcissists have no empathy, but I still fail to understand how someone can be so cruel and callous. Your videos have helped me grasp a concept that I think many of us didn't even know exist. I find myself getting it and not getting it because, wow, narcissism is unreal. I'm still shook. I would like to point out that I'm from a country that grows narcissists, grooms narcissists and certain cultural beliefs and practices create the perfect environment for them to continue with their bad behaviour or normalise certain conduct. My country has one of the highest levels of rape, domestic violence and femicide in the world. I hope you can do a series on certain cultures and the roles it plays in creating and normalising narcissism. I would like to thank you, HG. And I hope you continue with your great work. The experience there of Anonymous and the clear confusion that shines through in respect of what that person experienced. 
Next, we're going to hear from Daniel, who is from Germany, with his experiences. My name is Daniel, and I come from Germany. For over three years, I was in contact with a narcissist from Scotland. Every day, on a supposedly harmless singing app, and later on on Messenger. He pretended to be autistic, and so I thought that was the reason for his strange behavior. After a hate speech two months ago, which again surpassed everything previous, I broke off contact and went online looking for an explanation. On one channel, I was referred to HD Tutor. Since I know his channel, I listen to lots of his videos. Even if they have a similar topic, there are always new aspects and are just eye-opening. What these deep insights of HG into the narcissist's soul have made clear to me is the following. The person for whom I considered leaving my family is a middle-range narcissist. He doesn't really care about me as a person, manipulating me in many, many ways. I know now why he always put me in an emotional imbalance. Why, for example, in one moment I was the smartest person on earth, and in the next moment the world's greatest idiot. I know roughly where I was in his fuel matrix, and for sure that the only way out is to establish a no-contact regime, to approach with logic and curb my emotional thinking. Thank you for these findings. I am now in family therapy with my wife. Maybe we will find each other again. What I already feel, however, is that I sing more freely, my self-esteem rises again, and I have to arm myself not to be hoovered for the rest of my life from this person. Thank you for this outstanding and well-founded first-hand information. Thank you to Daniel for sharing his experience and how my work was able to bring him clarity and insight. If you've been affected by my work to enable you to escape from the clutches of a narcissist and you want to share your experiences, then please do send your video or audio file to Narcissist1909 at gmail.com for consideration and inclusion. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.